लागे जमनी गोरा मनी बाजे होरी लुना फूर भाजे जमनी गोरा मनी जागे बाका सामोहा जेलना घर ब्राजे बाका सामोहा जेलना घर ब्राजे कथाई पथारे भजल को गन गना कहे जंजेर रो हाथाए हाथाए भजल को गन गना कहे जंजेर रो छाए छाए भजल को गन गना छाए जंजेर रो मे जला जला सुन रंगा छे जला जला सुन रंगा मुखुंद माधवी बोल न बोल रे भोरी
Satin via Tato Jayamodi Rayat Nasta Praeshu Vabadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter number 25, the description of the characteristics of King Puranjan. Today text number 3. Prachinna Bhadisham Shatha Prachinna Bhadisham Shatha Prachinna Bhadisham Shatha Karmas Vasak Tamanasam Narado Dhyatma Tattvaksnya Narado Dhyatma Tattvaksnya Kripalu Pratyabodhayat Kripalu Pratyabodhayat Kripalu Pratyabodhayat Prachinna Bharisham Shatha Karmas Vasatamanasam Narado Jatma Tapvaknya Kripalo Pratyabodhaya Prachinna 
पृछिना बाह्य शमशाता धर्मस्वस्तमानसम नारदो ज्ञात्मतवक्न्या Kripalo Pratyabodhaya Prakina Bhagi Samsatta Padma Swasatta Manasam Manado Dhyatma Tatvanya Kripalo Pratyabodhaya Prachina Bhakti Samsatta Prachina Barisham Unto King Prachina Barisha Shata O Vidura Karmasu In fruitive activities Asakta Attached Manasam with this mentality. Narada, the great sage Narad. Adhyatma, spiritualism. Tattvaknya, one who knows the truth. Kripalo, being compassionate, Pratyabodayat, gave instructions. Translation, while the princes were undergoing severe austerity in the water, their father was performing different types of fruitive activities. At this time, the great saint Narad, master and teacher of all spiritual life, 
became very compassionate upon the king and decided to instruct him about spiritual life. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. As pointed out by Prabodhanand Saraswati Thakur, a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya, Kaivalya or merging into the Brahman effulgence is just like going to hell. He similarly states that elevation to the upper planetary systems for the enjoyment of heavenly life is just so much phantasmagoria. This means that a devotee does not give any importance to the ultimate goal of the karmis and jnanis. The ultimate goal of the karmis is promotion to the heavenly plant, heavenly kingdom. And the ultimate goal of the jnanis is merging into the Brahman effulgence. Of course, the jnanis are superior to the karmis as confirmed by Lord Chaitanya. Koti karma nishta madhye ekya jnani shrishta. One jnani or impersonalist is better than many thousands of fruitive actors. Therefore, a devotee never enters upon the path of karma or elevation by fruit of activities. Narada Muni took compassion upon King Prachina Barishat when he saw the king engaged in fruit of activity. In comparison to mundane workers, those who are trying to be elevated to the higher planetary systems by performing yajyas are undoubtedly superior. In pure devotion, in pure devotional service, however, both karmi, karmis and jnanis are considered bewildered, bewildering features of the illusory and energy. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chatsurun Militanye Nath Hasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupata Rubyasya Kripa Sindhu Vayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So, we are hearing about the situation. Here we have the princes, the sons of King Prachini Barisha. They had gone to do tapasya by going into the water and submerging themselves in the water and at the same time reciting the mantra or the song given to them by Lord Shiva. So this song which was given to them by Lord Shiva, that would allow them to awaken their devotion. But their father, Maharaj Prachini Barishat, he was performing different kinds of activities. He was engaging in some different kinds of fruitive activities. In other words, he wanted to get some material benefit 
from the activities he was performing. So Srila Prabhupada explains how there are different attitudes in performing these kind of ritualistic activities. One class of people are the karmis. The karmi means the fruit of worker. They want to enjoy the result. Now, now karmis, they may be following the Vedas, but they want to enjoy the result. The Vedas describe a lot of karmic activities, how you can get a lot of material enjoyment. And the ultimate enjoyment is to go to the higher planets. Jai Jagannath Mahadev Subhadra Radha Krishna Kumara. The ultimate enjoyment is when you can go to the higher planets, to the heavenly planets. On the heavenly planets you will have long life and you'll have a lot of opulence. There's no disease there. There's no COVID to worry about. And you don't have to have vaccines and things. So the life on the higher planets is of, it's of a much higher standard than the standard of life which we have here. And some people think, that that is the goal of life. They think we should try to go to the higher planets. But there's a problem and the problem is that you go to the higher planets, you cannot stay there forever. You can go and visit for some time but you have to come back. Just like people live in Malaysia and they like to go to Australia or they like to go to America but then they, after some time they have to come back, right? Unless they become permanent citizens, yeah. Unless they get PR, or green whatever, green card or something so they can stay there. But it's like that. You, you use up your piety and then you come back. You go to the higher planets because you do a lot of pious activities. You perform rituals according to the Vedas and you get good results. The, the results may vary. Some people may just want enjoyment in this life. They may just simply want opulence. They may want success or fame and they're performing different pious activities to get it. Sometimes they give charity, sometimes they do yajyas and sometimes they perform austerities. So here we, we were hearing the prachetas, they were doing austerity. And why were they doing austerity? they were going to come back and rule the kingdom. So they wanted to be in control of their mind and senses. When they come back to rule the kingdom, they have to be the controller of their mind and senses. And then they can be a good king. And when the king is good, then everybody benefits, everyone prospers. If the king is bad, then the whole kingdom suffers, everyone suffers. So some people are karmis, they want to enjoy the material world. They're following the Vedas, they're pious, but they're on the material platform. They will go to the higher planets, come back. Some other people, they're frustrated with the material world. They're not getting any real happiness out of the material world. So they're looking 
to go beyond the material world, to get out of the material world. They are called jnanis, impersonalists. They want to get out of the material world and their thinking is that out of the material world there will be only the oneness, there will only be the Brahman, the, the light. So their goal is to merge into that light, to enter into that effulgence. That is the goal of the impersonalists or the jnanis, people who practice jnana yoga. Generally they want to merge, they want liberation which is called Sayuja Mukti, entering into the oneness of the Brahman. They think material life means suffering. So long as you have a material body there will be suffering. So the jnanis they want to give up their identity. They think to be, a, to be a person means you will have to suffer. So they want to give up their personality, to give up their identity. And they want to do it by merging, by entering into that effulgence of the Brahman. So this is also not the correct idea. Although Prabhupada quotes from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Lord Chaitanya had explained these things especially to Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami was one of the direct disciples of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he met Lord Chaitanya. Well, first of all, they met at Ramakali, where Rupa and Sanatan were both living. And later on, Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami left Ramakali and they came to join Lord Chaitanya. But they came at different times. First of all, Rupa Goswami came and he met Lord Chaitanya at the place where the Ganges meets the Yamuna, at the place known as Prayag. And so Lord Chaitanya met Rupa Goswami there and he instructed him for ten days. And then he told Rupa Goswami, go to Vrindavan, go and stay in Vrindavan. Anyway, Lord Chaitanya explained to Rupa Goswami that the jnana, the path of karma and the path of jnana are not going to give you the goal of life. They're going to give you only some limited pleasure. The karmi wants to enjoy the material world. So they go to the higher planets and they enjoy, you know, the atmosphere of the heavenly planets. What is it like there? Well, everyone is very happy, they're all very attractive and they're all opulent, they have all kinds of opulence, but it's all temporary. They cannot stay there forever and they will fall back after some time. And the jnani he, he doesn't want the happiness of the material world because he knows that is not reality. He wants to get, he, he feels the happiness of the material world is just illusory. It, it is not real pleasure. And he feels that even where there's some happiness, there's also some suffering. Just like uh, Gop Kumar in the, in the book called the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, it describes how a cowherd boy from Govardhan got a mantra from his guru 
and he was able to travel with this mantra and he went to different places. He went to the heavenly planets. But he found on the heavenly planets there was also problems there. Sometimes people would argue with each other. Sometimes Indra would have an affair with another woman who was not his wife. And sometimes the, de the demons would come and attack the demigods. So even you go to the heavenly planets, don't think there's no problem. There are problems there. There's also problems. There's quarrel sometimes and disagreements. These things are there. You cannot get away from them. So, uh, Gokumar Gok decided he didn't want to be in the heavenly planets. So, the, the, the karmis, they want to enjoy the heavenly planets. The jnanis, they feel, no, if you're still a person, there's going to be suffering. Better is to give up our identity. And the way in which they give up their identity is by merging into the oneness, into the Brahman. Become one with the light, you see. This is the idea of the impersonalists. People who practice this, they're called jnana yogis. So these people generally, they will read, they're very fond of reading the Upanishads. They don't much like books like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam or the Puranas. But they like the Vedas. They like to read the Vedas. The Vedas are known as Shruti, but the Bhagavad Gita and the Puranas, they are Smriti. And there's a difference between the Shruti and the Smriti. The Shruti refers to the hearing process, and the Smriti is remembering. So anyway, these Jnanis, impersonalists, they will read the Upanishads. The Upanishads come from the Vedas. Just like we have our book, Ishopanishad. So it's from the Yajurveda. There are four Vedas. The Upanishads all come from... There are many Upanishads. We only have one Upanishad. We have the Ishopanishad. But there are many other Upanishads. And those people practicing Jnana Yoga, the impersonalists, they like to read the Upanishads. If you go to the place where they practice this system, they will speak from the Upanishads. Kali Santara Upanishad. Mm -hmm. These, there are many different Upanishads. Sometimes we will quote the Upanishads. We, are, we like to quote especially the Ishopanishad, but there are, there are many other Upanishads. So the Jnanis, they only read the Upanishads and they will not accept Bhagavad Gita. If you say Bhagavad Gita, they will say Bhagavad Gita, no, we don't accept Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is written by Vyasadeva. We don't. Have, the Vedas come from. The Vedas are eternal spiritual knowledge. They're not from any ordinary man. So the Vedas are perfect. So in this way, the jnanis they will not accept the Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam. Anyway, the jnanis their goal is to merge, enter into the oneness. It's spiritual suicide. People sometimes commit, they kill their bodies, they will commit suicide. They're, sometimes you get young people, they, they're not satisfied, they're very unhappy. 
we were, I was in Bengal one time and we were staying in one Bengali person's house and the man told us, he said, my son committed suicide. So we were surprised, you know, we are living in a Bengali village and it seemed very sattvic, it seemed very much the mode of goodness. So I was surprised, I said, why your son committed suicide? He said, the father told me, he said, because my son said, I, my, he said, you don't have any wealth, you're not rich. I don't want to be in your family. So he committed suicide, you know. Sometimes people are like that, they, they, no, I don't want to be here in this world. They commit suicide. So, of course, that's very bad, very sinful. People who commit suicide, they will not get a body in the next life. They will have to become goats. They will have only the subtle body. So, that's material suicide. Impersonalism is spiritual suicide because the impersonalists they want to deny their existence as an individual. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna said, Natvevaham jatu nasham natvam neme janadipa natvevana bhavishyama sadevayam adhaparam. Lord Krishna is saying, Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all of these kings, nor in the future will any of us ever cease to be. So Lord Krishna is pointing out the eternal nature of each and every individual entity. He says, never was there a time when I, nor you, not all of these kings, Lord Krishna was in the middle of the battlefield just prior to the battle of Kurukshetra. So Lord Krishna is pointing out, I, you and all of the kings, all of us, we're all eternal spiritual beings. And there's never a time when we don't exist, either in the past or in the future. So, and Lord Krishna also speaks more about the soul, the, the najayate, mriyate, vachaka. For the soul there's no birth and there's no death. And it cannot be cut by any weapon, burned by fire, moistened by the wind. The soul is spiritual and it's not affected by any material situation. So, knowing all of these things, we do not accept the, the proposition of the jnanis to merge into the oneness because the jnanis idea is that now I'm an individual and if I have to keep my individuality, if I have to remain a person, then to be a person means I will suffer. Of course, in the material world, we could say that's true. But you don't have to remain in the material world. You see, you can go beyond the material world. You can get out of the material world and go to the spiritual world. And in the spiritual world, there's no old age, there's no disease and there's no death. You can remain in the spiritual world and enjoy eternal spiritual life. So the solution to the problem is not to commit suicide spiritually, but to enter into the spiritual kingdom, to enter into the spiritual planets and to engage in activities with a spiritual body get rid of the material body and have our own spiritual body. The spiritual body does not take birth, 
it does not die. And we all have a spiritual body, but at the moment our spiritual body is covered by the material body. This material body is covering our spiritual nature. And just like we wear our clothing to cover our physical body, the same way our physical body is covering our spiritual body. And we have to free ourselves from karma, from the effects of the material energy, and then we can develop our spiritual body. So the jnanis, their thinking is to merge, enter into the oneness, become one with... And they give examples, stupid examples. They say, just like the, the water flows into the ocean, the rivers all flow into the sea, it becomes one with the sea. So we should become one with the ocean. So this is not a very good example. We point out that in the ocean, well, or in the rivers, there are also fish. And the fish come and swim into the ocean. And they keep their individuality. They don't give up their individuality when they enter into the ocean. They keep their individuality. We want to understand these, some examples are proper and some are not. We should understand how to defeat these different arguments. Particularly, we point out to people that it's stated in the Upanishads, it's a nityo nityanam chetananas chetananam eko bahuna yo vidati kama. Amongst all eternal beings, there is one supreme eternal person. And amongst all conscious living entities, there is one supremely conscious living entity. And that one Supreme Lord is providing the needs of all others. So this statement from the Upanishads describes that there is a Supreme and the others are being taken care of by that Supreme. That one Supreme Person. The Jnanis, the impersonalists, they're saying it's all one. They're saying there's no Supreme. There's only the Brahman, only the oneness. And they describe that oneness as being light. But the scriptures, and the, even the Vedas, they tell us that there is a Supreme. There is one Supreme who is providing for everyone else. So we want to understand properly the nature of spiritual existence. That if you enter into the light, there is no suffering there. But there is no real enjoyment there either. If you enter into that effulgence and become one, there's no, there's no enjoyment, there's no variety, there's no relationships. Just like if you go to the Buddhist temple, maybe you go to the Buddhist temple for a weekend meditation, they will tell you, don't talk to anyone. Don't even look at people. Just sit and meditate. Right? And they'll do that the whole weekend. And, and people will think, oh, very spiritual. The, the, there's no suffering, 
But there's no enjoyment. There's no enjoyment either. Because there's no relationships. Don't speak to anybody. Don't try to make... No, no you're not here to make... And that, because the Buddha's teaching is nothing. You don't exist. Nothing is real. So take a break and beat them on the head and tell them it's all right, it's not real. It's a crazy philosophy. But people are crazy. They accept these kind of teachings. So we have to understand what is real spiritual life. Spiritual life is not don't see, don't hear, don't speak. That is not spiritual life. That is not sinful. It's not sinful, but it's not spiritual. Spiritual life is to use everything for the service of the Supreme. To use our senses in the service of the Supreme Lord. We use our tongue to chant and to speak the glories of Lord Krishna. We use our ears to hear about Krishna. And we use our eyes to see the beauty of the deities. So our senses can be used in the service of Krishna. And when we, serve, when we use our senses in this way, the result is we become purified. And we can experience real pleasure. People, karmis, they're thinking, oh, I'm enjoying meat, fish and eggs. I'm enjoying smoking my drugs. I'm enjoying my beer. You know, they do not know what is real enjoyment. That pleasure which they're experiencing, that is actually, it's all suffering. You know, the, the things which they do, there's no real happiness in them. That is the happiness of the dogs and the pigs. The pig is also thinking, I'm enjoying the farmer is bringing me the big bucket of pig food. And the pig is thinking, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> They're thinking pleasure. They do not know what is real pleasure. So we have to purify our senses first of all. Then we can experience real pleasure. And so this has to be understood. And real spiritual life is pleasurable. You are not experiencing any pleasure you must be doing something wrong. You're not properly chanting, you're not engaging properly in devotional activities. Therefore, you're not experiencing any pleasure. Prabhupada gives the example, just like if you have a jar of honey and the jar is sealed, you can lick the jar but there's no taste, there's no pleasure in just licking the outside of the jar. You have to open the jar and go in and taste the honey. In the same way, in practicing bhakti yoga, we have to engage ourselves in the activities of devotion. We have to faithfully hear and chant and we have to come and see the deities and these different activities. They are all very powerful and they will purify us. We will experience real pleasure. The nature of the soul is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. But if we are only in the body consciousness, we will not feel that. The nature of the body is miserable. So we want to be careful to guard against spiritual 
ignorance. Okay, any question? Yes? Bao Shu Wen Ding. Keep steady in this material world. Huh? Keep steady. What should? Is that all right? To maintain steady in the material world and in spiritual world. To maintain what? To maintain the steadiness. In the material world? Yeah. Bao Shu Wen Ding. Yeah. Well, she's asking, yeah, is it all right to be steady in material life. Or is it only in spiritual life we should? Well, of course we have to be steady. You have to be regular in your practice. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna explains about these things in the sixth chapter, chapter six. Controlling the mind. He says, don't eat too much, don't eat too little. Don't sleep too much, don't sleep too little. We should be regulated in our activities of recreation and working and these things. Yes, there should be regulation. The devotee life is regulated. Just like in material life, you know, you go to, if you go to school or you have a job, there's a time you go to work, there's a time you finish the work. And so, similarly in spiritual life also, we have our spiritual program. Wake up certain time, Mongol Arti, the, the worshipping the deities, we're having the morning program, we have the evening program. So these things are regulated. And Prabhupada liked to see that, that uh, our, he liked that our temples are very regulated. Prabhupada himself was regulated. He liked to wake up in the middle of the night and he would write. And then early in the morning he liked to go out for a walk every morning. And he would always come back in time for the deity greeting and the devotees would offer Guru Puja to him. Then he would give a class. So it was very regulated. And Prabhupada said, just like in the military, if you join the army, then they will teach you to be regulated, disciplined, military discipline. In the same way, spiritual discipline is there. Everywhere there should be some discipline. Without discipline, then we'll be uncivilized. So yes, you should try to be regulated, but at the same time there will be circumstances where it will be difficult. Just like in family life, sometimes it will be difficult to be regulated. Sometimes you have, maybe your child gets sick, you have to take care of him. Maybe he's awake in the night, you have to you cannot get proper rest. Sometimes you have to take care of your husband, different things, social functions to attend. You have to, so some, you have to be able to adjust. You cannot expect that every day you can be regulated, although that's very good. Because then if you are very regulated, then it's easier to control your mind and senses. If you're not regulated, 
then it becomes very difficult to control the mind and senses. So having a regulation is very helpful for us to control the mind and senses. But you have to be tolerant and understand that sometimes it's not possible. But things like that change, you know, just like you have a young child, they want so much attention, they grow up, they're not children forever. They do grow up and they go off and the, they have their own life and then you're free, then you can be regulated. So you have to be patient and tolerant. And at the same time, within your mind you should desire to be regular, to keep a regulation. You want to keep that desire in your mind that I want to be regulated. Regulation certainly helps for our Krishna consciousness. Any other question? Yes? do we have to take again the body again? Body again, so if you want to come back to the human being, you just have to go back to the first step again to the public economy. Like the ends. Yeah, it's endless. The cycle of birth and death is endless. You go through the 84, 8,400,000 different species of life, and you can go up and then down and up and then down. But it's going on continually. It's like a wheel, a wheel, Ferris wheel, the wheel is rotating. So we're, our soul is like that, it's in the wheel and we're going up. Sometimes you go up to the higher planets and you're a demigod and sometimes you go down and you go down and sometimes you're a bird and sometimes you're a worm and you get eaten by the bird. <laughs> You go through all the different species of life. So you stay in that wheel of birth and death until you become Krishna conscious. So we're called Nitya Bada, eternally conditioned souls. Right? There's Nitya Mukta and Nitya Bada. Nitya Mukta means the eternally liberated soul and Nitya Bada means eternally conditioned souls. We are eternally conditioned souls. Means we've been in this material world so long we cannot remember. We've been round the 84 life species many times. We don't remember. So we are eternally conditioned. But we can become liberated, we can get free, we can become a Jivan Mukta, a liberated soul, by devotion of service. The Jnanis, they can also become liberated, but they're process is very trouble. It's a lot of effort, a lot of work. 
they have to endeavor for many lifetimes to get free from the material world. And they get only Sayyujya Mukti. They do not enter into the spiritual planets. They only enter into the light. They enter into that light, into that oneness. And they stay there for some time. But it's very boring there. There's no activity, no variety, no relationship. The soul, by nature, wants activity. And if we don't get activity, the, and if we don't get the activity, then we'll go some other place to find the activity. So the soul may go to the Brahman, but no activity. You get bored there, you come back to the material world. You come back to the material world and take up some welfare activities. Shahwe Fu Uma, serving the society. They make, they don't know what is spiritual activity. The impersonalists, they want to stop all activity. They think any activity means karma. But we understand that if you do activities for Krishna, no karma. But they are saying any activity karma. So they want to stop all activity. But that is artificial. The soul, the nature of the soul is to be active. And if we don't have activities, we come back to the material world. And we remain in the material world. You remain there. Nitya Bada. Rotating through all the different species. Yes? Hmm. How to become humble? More chanting. Offer all respects to others. Aman ena manadena kirtaniya sadahari. Offer respect to others and don't expect to get any respect for yourself. Become the servant, don't try to be the master. Serve the devotees. Okay. How to overcome fear? Well, fear is because of our bodily conception. And so we have to get rid of the bodily conception of life and then you will be fearless. Bhajahari mana shri nanda nandana abhaya chara nara vinduri Durlapa manava janama satsangi tharaho ye bhavasin We take, take shelter of Lord Krishna fix the mind on the lotus feet of Lord Krishna and in this way we will become fearless. So fear is caused because of our identification with the body and our attachment to the things in relation with the body. So we have to change that attachment to attachment to Krishna. We cannot just simply give up attachment, but we can purify attachment by directing the attachment towards Krishna. So the more we are attached to Lord Krishna, the less we will have 
fear. Uh -huh. So, how to become attached to Krishna? Chanting the holy name, engaging more in Krishna's service, hearing, reading the books and hearing Kata will help us to become more attached to Krishna. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Yes, so am I. These few years, you try to, to, to try to, uh, Huh? Try to try to correct person. Well, you have to be patient and you have to be determined to change yourself. Yeah, if you practice devotional service, then gradually you can change yourself. It may take some time. But you should be determined. Mm -hmm. Okay, Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavad Gita.